Okay, let's take a look at how to create muscle tension lines. As you can see from this note, it is optional in the sense that you can get your muscles to sim without tension lines. Um, this would be in the case where either you don't want any flexing of your muscles at all, or if you want flexing, but you want to hand animate the flexing over the course of the shot for each shot, which sounds like a lot of work. So I recommend using tension lines because it makes your life a lot easier. So uh, to, let's create the node. And if I create it first and then connect it to the bones, because the input needs to be bones, ideally rest bones, or um, if you're using anim bones, you can make sure that you specify the t-pose attribute. But um, it's supposed to display the bones, but it doesn't. The way to fix that is to dive inside, press U to go back up. That will display the bones. Or the other option is to click on this output and then press tab and type tension lines. And then it will be fine. Okay, so we've got the bones. Now, why do we want to create tension lines? So basically, we're going to create lines that will connect bones together, and basically in the way that muscles do. And then when, as the bones animate, as those lines get longer or shorter, we can use that information to tell the muscle flex to flex the muscles. Okay? So it's a lot better than hand animating the um, flex values. So let's create some tension lines. So I'm in my viewport state. You can see over here it says A for dragging a new line. So don't hold down A, you just tap it. So then it's going to create a new line. Then you click and drag from the one point to the other and release. And now that has created a tension line. And you can edit it. You can... Um, rename it. In fact, you should rename it. And I recommend renaming it as soon as you've created it because otherwise you'll forget. And then it's always a schlep to do it at the end. So I'm going to say L underscore elbow. Um, it doesn't really matter what you name it, but it really helps to name it something that makes sense because Autoflex 1 is not going to tell you anything. And if you have dozens of these lines, it's going to get really confusing in your muscle flex node. Um, and if you just have silly names, you might have a chuckle now, but then in three months time, if you open your file again and you're trying to change anything, you are going to be so frustrated with yourself. So try and get names that make sense, like L elbow, because it generally is going to be describing a joint, right? And sometimes you'll want, you, you might even have multiple lines per joint, so you can maybe specify where. So maybe I'll say L elbow front even so that I know it's not the side or the back or something. Okay. So now I've created one. Let me create another one. Um, A, click, drag, release, rename it, L, knee, back. Okay. So firstly, I'm going to caveat this video by saying my expertise is in how these tools work. My expertise is not in animal locomotion and anatomy. I can tell you what sort of things will give you the best results in terms of the most control, but I am not an expert in what the perfect firing of muscles when is. So Take what I say in that regard with a grain of salt, but do bear in mind the things I say in terms of what's going to work best in terms of how the tools are designed. Okay, so having said that, I want to show that how I've drawn this line. Basically, I have taken the, the position of the knee where it pivots, and I've drawn my line to be each end to be about the same distance from the pivot, right? So instead of, I've done that instead of something more like 
this. Okay, this is more in line with what a muscle here actually would attach like. But the reason I've gone for something shorter and equidistant is the logic. The reasoning for this is as follows. And now I just want to point out a little flaw here. Um, the the these lines will snap to the bones. But if you're not careful, if you're in a funny, at a, looking at it at a strange angle, it could snap to the unintended bone. So just uh, make sure you pivot around and make and check that it always makes sense. But anyway, back to the reasoning here. The the flex node, which comes after this, is going to look at the change in length of these tension lines and use that to ramp in and ramp out of a flex state for the muscle. Now, if you have a tension line that is quite long and then only adjusts in length very slightly, it's going to be very hard for the flex to pick up a change in the value. So you, it's going to be very difficult to tweak it to the right setting to get it to flex. However, what, if it's on equal sides of the joint, it doesn't really matter too much how far away it is. But if it's on equal sides of the joint like this, it doesn't matter how far away too much. I like to make it a bit closer. But the percentage of the line length is going to be greater when it changes, when the leg moves, when it straightens and bends. So that is the reasoning for having for this type of positioning of the tension lines. Now, the whole idea of the muscles contracting or flexing when the, these joints bend is a little bit simplistic, um, especially in something like legs, where the impact with the ground and you know the weight bearing side of it is also an influence on how the muscles fire. So I will admit that I haven't perfectly figured out the best way to account for that. But one thing that I found is useful is, let me create a new line, is to have one that comes from the hips to the heel. I find this is a nice approximation for sort of the swing state of the leg more than any um, tension lines on specific joints. So I recommend giving this a try and seeing if you get nice results. I found, especially for like calf muscles, I can get pretty nice um, activations using um, a hip to heel line instead. So let me just rename that. I don't know if I should call it hip to heel or leg. Maybe leg is just simpler. Then I might want a something like this. I can call this L um, ankle. Could say front. Oops, there I've snapped it wrong. And you'll see um, sometimes it will snap, but the handle will remain where you had it. So you kind of need to play with it a bit until you get it to. Um, oh, now it's really not snapping again. Oh, I accidentally hit the scroll, the manual scroll, which, oh, it actually looks like that fixed position of it. So I on purpose hit the middle mouse scroll. So um, the, what the middle mouse scroll does is when you have multiple lines like this, it lets you, it will scroll between the different ones so that you can edit all the ones. Okay, so now I can go back and change that. And I can change this. Did I name it? Yes, I named it. Um, I like to create some around here for the... Sometimes if you zoom in too much, the brush is very big. So that can be L, hip, front, could have an We can go back and tweak this. Like I said, I'm really not the biggest expert on anatomical firing. Um, but the nice thing about this is it's very editable, so you don't need to get the whole thing right in your first go, and you can come in and add more. Okay, maybe we want, so let's say when he, if he ever bends side to side, we'd want the lats to fire. So I'm going to 
press A, draw something like that. And I'll call it L torso um, side. And I just remembered you can actually display these line IDs in this last tab if you toggle on line length. The only thing is it doesn't update immediately when you first toggle it on. If you press U to go up a level, I to go back in, then it will update it and show. And if there's ever a color that isn't quite working and you can't see it that well, you can tweak the random seed for the colors with a slider. You can also show your line length um, if you find that useful for your flex settings later. And you'll see that by default, the symmetry is on. So by default, it is um, mirroring all of these lines I created. And it will mirror it no matter what the name is. But if the name has an L in it, it will replace it with an R on the mirrored side. Uh, so let's say, OK, I want to do most of my lines symmetrical, but I perhaps want to have a line in the center for the abdomen or something that I don't want to be symmetrical. It is also fine just to have two for you. Don't care too much, but let's say we are pedantic because I'm definitely not. Okay, so if we turn off the symmetry, then we can go in, hit enter for the viewport state, press A, click and drag. Okay, now. Um, I'll call this C torso front. And now we have these two nodes. And the reason they aren't stacked in a row is because the input needs to be bone geometry. But you can merge them together. That should be completely fine as long as um, you have unique names for the lines. If the names aren't unique, I'm not entirely sure what happens, but I suspect it will be bad. So I'll just call this maybe symmetrical and center or something. You can split these. If you want to have one per limb, you can do that. It's up to you. Um, you can merge as many together as you like. Again, as long as the names are unique. One more feature of the tension lines is you see there's this second input option called additional lines. So this is great if you have, for instance, you maybe created a setup in another DCC and you're trying to transfer it over to Houdini and you already have the tension lines created, then as long as the scale is correct, you can hook them up in here. Um, if another option is if perhaps you create tension lines procedurally, um, you could use, I've seen someone do a pretty clever thing where they generate their tension lines based on their muscle ends. Uh, that gives you a lot of tension lines, but if they're created procedurally, it's that's awesome. Yeah, so you have some different options there, but you can input them in the second line, and then the muscle tension lines will just um, create all the attributes that are expected on the muscle tension lines, which are auto flex ID, length, and rest length. So the way the additional lines work, let's just create a line. I'll just um, offset it a tad. And um, let's just create a muscle tension lines. And let's say um, it came in with a name already. Um, I could just go and do this correctly. From, okay, but let's just say it has the name attribute, and um, let's say it's a primitive, and let's call it L line. Okay, you can do an attribute rename. So this is this is assuming that this is just how the data is coming in, not necessarily created that way. But I have a name attribute. I want to change it to be autoflex. ID. So you see, this is what creates Autoflex ID. Um, so primitive. So I'll go name to Autoflex ID. And now when you input this, you see it mirrors it. If you have an able symmetry on, it's going to 
change the name so that the name gets mirrored. Um, but if you don't have any names already coming in, what you can do instead is you can still use, you can, um, basically for unnamed things, this option here is you can just say, um, external line. And then it will um, use that. Or you could even say, if you know everything is just on the left side, you could do L external line and it will mirror it. And if you have multiple lines, it will just have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this isn't ideal because you won't have the best naming. Um, I'm actually curious if you can use this to rename it. I don't think so. No. Okay. So yes, you can't use this to rename it. You can just give it default naming based on this, but if you already have naming, just call it Autoflex. Um, but you'll see that it's going to create Autoflex ID length and rest length. So if you have external lines, you can input them in the second input and it will create these attributes for you. Um, and then if I wanted to combine it, I would just merge it in with everything else. Great. In the next video, we will um, look at how we can combine our tension lines with the muscle flex.